What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and today Apple released iOS 10.1 Beta 2. This software update I'm looking forward to so much just because it adds that portrait mode for the iPhone 7 Plus. Now sadly, all other devices seem to be neglected, but in this new update, Beta 2, there's actually a few new changes that you're gonna see across the board. So I wanted to cover those with you, what's new, what's changed, and everything you need to know about this software update. So if you're already on Beta 1, it's gonna come in at about 170 megabytes. It wasn't that big, but this is what it's gonna look like right here. You can go ahead and update over the air from your settings. And uh, I, would, I would say it's pretty stable. I really haven't been experiencing much issues. I've been running it because I wanna you know, play around with the portrait mode on my device. And I'm gonna show you guys if there's any difference here. I actually have a gimbal that I'm gonna go ahead and use and take this outside. But the one issue that I hate about my iPhone 7 Plus right now is going from light to dark environments. And I'm gonna show you that in just a second. It is so bad. So let's go outside and take a look at the portrait mode. Now the very first thing I wanna show you guys is the difference between the 7 Plus and iPhone 6S Plus. And that's the issue that I'm hoping Apple will fix with iOS 10.1 and uh, over here is 6S Plus on the right. So sorry if the audio is a bit off, I'm away from the mic, but look at this. So if I pan out, look at how jerky the 7 Plus goes from dark to light. The white balance is so bad how it's implemented. So I'm really hoping in a later iOS 10.1 beta, this will be fixed because this bothers me to no end. And you can actually see this in many areas during my camera test. So please Apple fix this on 10.1. All right, so forget going outside. Washington is pouring right now. Now I can't say I've noticed any better differences in the portrait mode. In fact, I'm even noticing more blurs. Usually around the edges over here, you're gonna see uh, blur where it can't define the edges very well. And this is more in muted colors. So if there is more of a differentiation between two colors, it'll tell the difference better. But if I refocus, yeah, it's actually really, really blurry for some reason on the edges. So it's definitely not better and it seems a little worse even from the original portrait mode on the first beta, although that one does have some issues with this as well. So not so bad. All right, so there is the portrait mode. It seems okay, but definitely could be better. And I'm sure by the time it's released, it's gonna be ready for prime time. Man, I just love this thing. This thing is amazing. I just picked this up the other day, so I'm gonna be doing a full review on this. I think this is the best gimbal you could possibly buy for your phone. This is amazing. All right, guys, so moving on. Now, as far as new features and changes, there are a few. Namely, notifications are now working from the lock screen. So if I go ahead and go to the lock screen, click on a notification, and now, if you actually unlock your device, you'll be taken straight to that notification. I can't tell you how many times in uh, iOS 10.0.2 on my personal device, I click on it and it just takes me to the lock screen or to the home screen and it's really annoying. That's been fixed. So Apple has made some improvements with the messages. If I go ahead and set a message with an effect on both of these, you know, it'll show up just like that. But on the new beta, you're now gonna get a button to go ahead and replay the effect. So if you wanna check it out again, there it is. You can now replay effect in iMessage. Now in accessibility, this isn't a new option. It was present in beta one. There is an option if you have reduced motion turned on, a secondary option for iMessage effects. So you can disable autoplay for them. However, it's only now in this version, beta two, that this effect is finally working. So if I go ahead and send a message with an effect, now with that setting turned on, beta two right here, we'll go ahead and autoplay the effect. Beta one does not, even with that accessibility setting enabled. So that setting is now working in beta two. There's a very small change in messages when you go to pick an image, blink and you'll miss it. But there used to be dots down here to let you know which page you were on. Now, no longer, it just tells you what that page is. So if I swipe over, it'll change, but no longer do you have any page indicator dots. And the very last change is iOS 10.1 does include a fix for motion handling. So it's now able to access barometric pressure, data from the iPad Air 2, iPad Mini 4, and the iPad Pro. So nothing you're gonna see, not a new feature, just under the cover changes. And that's it for the actual features of iOS 10.1. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys Geekbench results before and after on the same device. So I'm gonna run Geekbench 4 and see what the change is. So I got 3452 and 5580. Not bad, but it is lower than beta one for some reason, although that shouldn't really impact much. 
it's uh, so far smooth, it works well, and you could even use it as a daily if you wanted to just to try out that portrait mode. So if you wanted to go public beta, I say do it. It's really not that bad. The last thing I wanted to talk about is storage. So before and after updating, and uh, we'll be done in just a second here. So 121.74 capacity and 115.67 available. So it did take up about a gigabyte of my data, which isn't bad. I would definitely trade that for the new portrait mode. So awesome guys, there it is, iOS 10 beta two. I'll be sure to share any news with you in the coming days if there's a beta three or whatever, but it's an awesome update. I cannot wait to get it on my seven plus. As for everybody else, really not much to talk about, only if you have a seven plus. And I don't know if any of you guys would be interested in this, but I just wanted to share some shots I got with the portrait mode just to show you just how awesome it is. I mean, it, it gives this professional effect on a smartphone that just doesn't compute with me. So it looks like I'm a much better photographer than I really am. It's really hard taking pictures of cars with this because you have to be eight feet from within the subject. So you don't really get much to play with here, but it did blur out the background nicely here and on the rear shot. See, I couldn't get it this far out. Um, let's take a look at anything else I got in here. So we did some fire shots with the portrait mode. It doesn't handle very well in low light. That's the only negative I gotta say but overall, this is before, after, so kind of cool, really good stuff, guys. So there it is. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I'll have more videos for you soon. Peace.